Hello there. I hope you had a good day. Uh, thank you for selecting this video. Today, we are going to look at impeller design. Uh, how do we use FreeCAD uh, to draw impellers? First, uh, let's look at uh, what we're going to do. So our target today is using FreeCAD uh, to draw this impeller. And what we're going to do is uh, we shall be using uh, some numbers uh, to draw this blade. Look at those numbers. Uh, we want to have a rotation angle and a movement along Z. You can see that the rotation angle increases by uh, 10 degrees while the Z movement increases by 16 degrees. So take note of these numbers. So let's get started. What you're going to do is you're going to create, click on a new page. Let's click on that and make sure we are under part design and then click on sketch. Click on the XY plane and select Okay, now we're going to draw uh, the blade profile. So go ahead and click on that square tool. Make sure it's floating. Let's do it this way. So make sure you're not drawing it on any of the uh, either X or Y axis. Just make sure it's floating. Then we're going to click on the constraint lock then click on that lower vertice. So, and after that, we shall select this value, which is the vertical value and give it a value of zero. And then we shall select this horizontal value and give it uh, a value of 15 millimeters. So that will be one five millimeters. And then click on Okay, then after that, uh, we shall go to constraint and click on the vertical cost, distance constraint. Click on that edge and give it a distance of five millimeters. Then go to the horizontal constraint, click on this edge and give it a distance of 80 millimeters. Click on OK. Let's zoom out and make sure we, we are seeing everything. So that's our blade profile. Let's just pull out this so we can see the values. So that's our blade profile. Now, after all the constraints are set and we have uh, our profile for a constraint, go ahead and click on close. Then the next step we are going to do is you're going to right click on this sketch and click on copy. Then click on OK. Now this is going to take us back to our values. So we are going to use these values. So if you have time, just take note of those values. So after having those values, we are going to right click and paste. So we could get sketch one. Once we get sketch one, we are going to give it an angle of 10. So click on there, go to placement, expand placement, change so go under attachment, go to angle, change that to 10 degrees. Then uh, what you're going to do is you're going to expand position and we are going to change the Z value to eight millimeters and press enter. Right click, paste, click on sketch tool, change the angle to 20, press enter, change Z to 16. 
right click, paste, sketch 3, our angle is 30, our Z is 24. Right click, paste, that would be sketch 4, angle is 32, Z is going to be, sorry, our, the angle here is 40. And the Z movement should be 32. And then the last sketch, go ahead and paste. Our angle is going to be 50. And Z movement is going to be 40. So let's bring this back in view. So you'll see that we are having a profile, sort of uh, doing a face uh, difference between 10 degrees to 50 degrees. So after creating uh, that face, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, change our workbench to part. So go ahead and select part. Uh, once you select part, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to click on the loft tool. This one here. So you go ahead and click on loft and make sure you're moving this in the rightful order. So start with that, go to the next, go to the next, that way. So make sure we start with, you have the sketch up to then one up to five in that order. Then uh, click on create solid and then click on okay. Uh, you can see our profile has been uh, created. You get it? So make sure you have loft uh, selected and you have it all selected green. Come to this section, click on that and then click on the polar array. Now, we're going to create eight blades. Our angles is, go we're going to use 360 degrees, that's all around. Then all these are going to be zero. So just change all these to zero. And then click on okay. So those are our, our blades, as you can see them, are nothing to change, they, they look fine. Okay, so once we are done with that, uh, what we are going to do is we are going to go back to our sketch. But uh, this time we are going to create on new sketch and take note, we are going to select X, Z plane and then click on OK. So you'll see something of the sort. So we are sort of looking at this uh, impeller on the side. So what you're going to do is you can click on this uh, so you can have that face and you're going to select this tool and sketch uh, a profile. You can just do it this way. Click that, click that. So, so we're going to, we are drawing actually the shaft of the, uh, where the, the path where the shaft goes through. Click that, click that, click that, click, 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 and click. So you're going to have something of the sort. So this, what we're going to do is we're also going to create a, a lock constraint. So go to constraints, click on lock, click on this bottom part of it. So let's select the horizontal. This will be 10 millimeters. And then click on the vertical, and that will also be 10. 
sorry, this has to be negative 10. So we need to bring it under. So that has to be negative 10. So let's go ahead and give it uh, constraints. So uh, go ahead and click on the uh, horizontal constraint. Click on this, give it a constraint of 10. Then uh, let's go ahead and uh, click on this and give it a constraint of 15. Click on this, give it a constraint of 71. Uh, let's first do the vertical constraint. Let's do the vertical ones first. So we can select this and we're going to give it a constraint of nine and then click on this and give it a constraint of 55 and then click on this and give it a constraint of five. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some math is, so if we get our nine uh, plus five, nine plus five, uh, minus 55, uh, we get uh, 41. So we need, we can give this a cost rate of 41. And then uh, we can have our part for a cost rate. Let me go ahead and uh, get these dimensions so we can see them. So let's do that. 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 And let's do that. So we do have our shaft uh, fully constrained. So uh, after we have it constrained, so what we're going to do is we're going to create an arc between these two lines, this and this. So go ahead and click on this. Uh, click on that arc and also click on that arc. Then uh, we shall be selecting a radius constraint. Click that arc and give it a radius of 35, click OK. OK, let's do this. Let's put a constraint, a horizontal constraint between that point and that point. And that is going to be 5. That's going to be five plus nine, which should be 14. So this is five and this is nine, which is 14. So let's give it a constraint of 14. And there we are. We are fully constrained on this arc. So let me just pull this here. So make sure everything is solid uh, is green so once it's green you know your flare constraint go ahead and click on close after you click on close go back to part design now after you select part design, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look out for this tool, which is revolve. So make sure you have this sketch selected and then click on revolve. And then after you click on uh, revolve, uh, we're going to make sure our axis is zero, zero, and one. like that. 
and then make sure you have crit. This will be zero. It's zero zero, and make sure direction is set to one. And then make sure you click on create solid and click on OK. So if we hide, you can see that we're, this is what we are creating. So let's go ahead and return the blades. So after we have uh, the blades uh, on, what we are going to do is we are going to merge the blades and the shaft. Okay, so on 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 this, what we are going to do is we are going to click on the array and the revolve. So we are going to make sure both of them are selected. And then we are going to look out for this tool. This should be a union. So make sure you select array revolve and then click on union and that is going to create a single piece so if you look at it from all directions we have our impeller drawn so we can just turn off all this and then even that sketch and then we can have our impeller. So that's it. Uh, that's how to draw an impeller in FreeCAD. Uh, if you follow the values in the table, you can see that it's a uh, it's actually simple to draw one then you can always export this in uh, for example a CAD CAM application for CNC machining or you can uh, send it to Blender for rendering as an image and that's it thank you for watching please subscribe and have a good day bye for now